Hey guys, so today's video is inspired by uh, a healthy discussion I had in the comment section of yesterday's video, which was titled, Throw Away Your Tiny Brushes. And uh, it was the video with Pete Sinjin. And I won't go into details um, you know, of the conversation. Uh, you can go back into the comment section. It was with Bad Tangent and you can read it. Uh, but uh, there were a lot of things discussed there. And so I'm just gonna try to be focused. And um, one of the things I thought about uh, through that conversation was about equipment and the importance of equipment. And uh, as you guys know, I started out, uh, you know, before being a painter, I was a musician. And there's something that I noticed about musicians, and I did this myself. When you're first starting out, it's a struggle. You know, you're struggling to learn your guitar and you're, you're struggling to learn how to play better. And you kind of become obsessed with gear. You think, okay, well, if I get that Gibson guitar or I get that Fender guitar, if I get that certain amplifier or I get that certain effect, or if I use the same picks that Keith Richards use, or if I like drink the same whiskey that Howlin' Wolf drinks, <laughs> you know, like if I can get the right gear, then I can play like those people. You know, and, and, you know, look, we were raised in a culture, I mean, where you're told from the time that you're little, you're exposed to advertising, which is always like, oh, you're not, you know, your life isn't the way you want, you need to buy this product. So we just carry that sort of thinking over into, um, you know, when you're learning how to, you know, play guitar or paint paintings or whatever. I think there's this focus on the equipment or the gear, uh, you know, as a possible solution for whatever struggle or problem you're having. My argument is, is that that is wasted energy and it's an avenue that you don't want to go down. Um, I remember, I'll give you an example. I remember I used to windsurf a lot back in the 80s and, uh, and I remember there were all these gearheads, you know, guys that were like, oh yeah, you got to get this board or this sail or this or whatever. And then there was this champion guy, I can't remember what his name was, Mike something. And, and there was this article in Windsurfer Magazine, it was like, it's not about the gear. And it shows this dude, Mike, just, you know, shredding on a door. He had just taken like a, a, house, like a door from a house and he mounted a sail on it and he was just, you know, carving waves and whatever. And the point is, is like, okay, so, I mean, that's kind of a joke, but the point I really, took it to heart. Um, and so what I want to, you know, express in this video is, is that, you know, you need a basic understanding of the gear. So like when you start out, okay, when I started out painting, as you guys know, I'm self-taught. So, um, that was the, the gear deciding the equipment in the gear was like one of the biggest challenges for me. Um, in fact, at first, you know, I had decided I wanted to do some oil paintings. I wanted oil paintings in the house. And so, it's like, all right, we'll just go to an art supply store, buy some canvases, buy like a starter pack of, you know, Grumbacher oils and, uh, you know, a few brushes. And then and I just went home and started and just started painting. Um, and I painted like um, I did. I just took a photograph that I liked and I just tried to carefully reproduce that photograph. Um, and I spent like four days doing it. You know, it was hyper detailed. I was putting in every blade of grass. And, um, and so basically, and at the end of it, I was not happy with it. I felt like it was, you know, it was well drawn and it was carefully executed, but it seemed sort of lifeless to me. And it didn't look like a painting. It looked like a painting of a photograph. So, um, anyway, so then I decided I needed some knowledge and I went and I got a book, uh, I think it was called Groupie on painting, Emil, by Emil Groupie. Um, spelled G-R-U-P-P-E. Uh, that was the first book that I looked into and it was great because it had suggestions for, you know, brushes and canvas and the type of easel and that sort of thing. So I found that really helpful. But it just gave me a basic understanding, a starting point. And I think that's the important thing is that, you know, when you're starting out, it's good to have like a basic understanding of the tools but then you've got to, you go out and you start painting on your own. And then while you're doing that, you're going to start saying, okay, this doesn't work for me right now, or this is not getting the effect I want. I'll go experiment with this or that. Go walk through the aisles of an art store and look at the brushes, look at the different materials. 
Uh, I don't know, I mean, I find that really enjoyable. I love going into art stores and just looking, I mean, just looking at all the materials gives me ideas. Like, oh wow, what would this brush do? Or what would this do? Um, and so, uh, like I said, I'm not saying, I think that there's, you know, there, it's really necessary to have that starting, that foundation of like the basic materials, also basic understandings of technique. Um, you know, and also like look at paintings, be aware of paintings that are considered to be great paintings and see how you feel about them. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that if you're, you know, uh, I know a lot of painters, they get 10 years into painting and they're still obsessing about the brushes that, you know, that, that Sargent uses or the type of medium that he uses and everything. Um, and I think that's, a, that's fine. That's just not where I'm at with things. Um, I want to, let me see if I can show you, this is kind of how I think about things here. Um, so, <laughs> a little diagram board here. So the way I feel is, is like, here's the group of beginning painters, okay? And what do you want to give them? You want to give them the basic understanding of materials. You know, here are the primary colors or whatever. Here's how you mix color. Here are some brushes. Here are various different types of medium to experiment with. Here are some approaches to composition. Here are a bunch of paintings that, you know, we consider, you know, uh, milestone paintings, whether it's Impressionism or Renaissance, whatever. Look at it all. Absorb that sort of stuff. Um, you know, but again, you don't need, you, you know, that's pretty, you, you can get started with a pretty basic understanding, but then you've got to get to work. So anyway, we've got a bunch of artists here who have that basic knowledge. Then what happens is most of these people are working within the structure of existing knowledge, okay? And they're playing by the rules. And you've got to do that for a little while. And we are used to playing by the rules in our society because that's how school is. You play by the rules, you get the A, you, you know? But in art, I feel like it's a little different. You start off playing the rules, but to excel, you've got to start figuring out some of your own rules. So you start out in the group, and then there's some people that start leaving the group and thinking for themselves, okay? And they're going off in different directions, all right? So these people know the rules, they know the tradition, they've got the basics down, but now they're pushing. So out here, who do you have? You have Monet out here. You have Sargent over here. You have maybe Jackson Pollock here, Picasso, you know, Van Gogh. Okay, so you have people that have taken that basic understanding and then moved out. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, Michael, where do you think you are? Well, I'm probably just like right in here. <laughs> Maybe I'm at the edge, you know? Like I'm trying to, who knows where I am? It doesn't even matter. It's like hard to judge. M mostly people are gonna judge later, you know, like after I'm dead, they'll probably say, who knows? Maybe I'm out here and I don't even know it. I don't know. I don't care, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that I'm trying to think, you know, I go out and I think for myself. All right, so I hope that gives you an idea of, of kind of how I think about it. And I think that the magic happens out there, outside the group. You know, you could say, all right, well, I'm gonna paint as well as Sargent, and then I'm gonna take it one step far further. That's great. Um, but, you know, perfect example is there's plenty of bar bands out there. I've seen, like, people who do covers better than the actual, like, bands do. So, you know, like for example, in music, you might have somebody like the Rolling Stones that go out there and they play sloppy versions of their songs, right? And then you have a bar band who sounds just like the record, but nobody cares about the bar band. You know, like they, they might fill a bar, but Rolling Stones would fill a stadium, you know? So what's the difference? The difference is that, you know, that, that and, and the bar band is obsessed with, oh yeah, what guitar does Keith Richards use, or what is, what amp, what are his amp settings and all this stuff. Again, I don't want to like, look, I don't want to like pass judgment on people who want to follow in footsteps and play within the structure and play by the rules. Like I said, that's what we're trained to do. School trains you to do that. I'm just saying, you know, for me, the excitement is outside of the group think. It's thinking outside the box. And I'm not saying that, you know, what I do has to be like, you know, dramatically different or, or you know, extreme in some way. I, I don't really even know. But if I'm out there just trying to figure out what appeals to me and I follow that, that instinct or that voice, 
you know, it's going to take me somewhere, you know, and that may end up producing some good work. The chances of doing something that's going to be monumental are, you know, or change the direction of art, you know, you can't predict that. You know, none of these painters like Van Gogh, he didn't, he died thinking he was a failure. He had no idea the effect that he would have on art, the art world. Uh, Monet, you know, obviously he lived longer and, and um, it became clear later in his life that, you know, the effect that he had on art and that the impressionist had. But a lot of times during, in the moment while you're experimenting or whatever, you know, you're not even going to know if you're doing something that's, it's just, it's hindsight that we look back and we say, oh, wow, they did some really amazing things or some monumental things. So I'm not worried about that. I don't care how, it's just more going out, trying to think for myself and figure out what makes me happy. Um, and so anyway, that's my rant about equipment. It's just, it's just, you get like, start off with a basic understanding and then just experiment, figure it out for yourself and look at a lot of paintings, you know, and, and decide what it is that you like about those paintings and, and then maybe incorporate some of those things or experiment with some of those techniques. So I guess, I guess the thing I take away from it is, is like if you're focused on gear and you think that's going to solve the problem, it's, you know, in my experience, it doesn't, it's just wasted energy and you're going down the wrong path. Sometimes it's a lot easier to intellectualize than it is to just go out there into the unknown. And that's basically what it is. It's like it's scary to go to into the unknown. And um, but that's where the fun is. That's where the adventure is. I heard somebody say, and I, I feel this is very true. Like the good stuff happens like at the <laughs> it happens like where order and chaos meets. So in other words, you take your, your understanding and your, you know, your knowledge, and then you, and then you push it right to the edge and you, you kind of, uh, like when I, and that's what's great about plein air painting is you're kind of off balance and you are working instinctually because you've got the wind and you've got all these challenges. You're not in control and that's where you, you are forced to rely on your instincts and you're not overthinking. You're reacting instinctually and that's where the magic happens. So I think if you want to grow as a painter, that's the place, that's the place where you're going to learn at that, at that, the border of like order and chaos, right? At least that's where my biggest breakthroughs have been, you know? And, and a lot of times the breakthroughs that are made, I can't even, my brain hasn't reached the level to appreciate them yet. So I may think something is a failure. And uh, didn't work. And then two months later, I'm like, oh yeah, I wasn't ready to see. I couldn't. My my uh, like perceptual development wasn't at a point where I could appreciate what was going on. But now I get it, you know. Or other paintings that I thought, oh, this is working. This is great. This is what I exactly what I want. And then two months later, I'm like, uh, no, I'm tired of that. Or that didn't work at all, you know. So. The point is, is don't dwell on equipment, just get out there and do it and then evaluate your, get some distance on your work and then evaluate it, see the things that are working and, and just try to, yeah, just try to keep pushing yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, you know, I love reading your comments and hearing your thoughts on things. So anyway, I'm going to get out there and paint today. It's, it's a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.